artists, today we're gonna to be making something I like to call texture creatures. And you get a choice between having it in the day or at night. We're gonna talk a little bit about what texture means in art and how you can use it in this project. Okay, so there's a difference between the night and the day. Uh, with the night paper over here, you will need black paper. And for the daytime paper, you would need white and a black marker. So what you're gonna do um, first probably is want to plan an idea. And I have this uh, idea sheet, which you can use. Um, it gives you the directions on how to draw kind of a simple creature. And I stress the word simple or not complicated because we are going to be doing something called glue drawing. And with glue drawing, you can't have too many small shapes uh, because it will just turn into a glob. So you're gonna start off with eyes. You can have them different sizes. Um, I recommend using one, two, or three eyes. Uh, from the eye, you want to draw curved lines. And then from there, you can make your mouth. With the mouth, you can add teeth. You can have square teeth or pointed teeth. Don't add too many and make sure they're really nice and big because when you do it with glue, you'll need bigger shapes. Um, you can have it below or above. You can add extra things like eyebrows, eyelashes, horns, antenna. Um, it's really up to you, but remember, keep it simple, keep your shapes big. So if you're drawing it, um, you can practice it on the back of this paper first, um, just to kind of sketch out a few ideas. And once you kind of get one that you like, you can draw it on the bigger paper, okay? Uh, if you're drawing it on white paper, make sure you write your name first and your comb, flip it over because you want your name on the back, and then start with the eye, okay? Um, it's okay if you change it a little bit from your original plan, but you wanna fill this whole paper with your idea. I think I forgot to add a tooth, so I'm gonna add one right here, and maybe some antenna. This looks a little bit like a bug. Now, if you're doing it on the white paper, you also have to add black marker. And the reason for this is we are going to be doing something called glue drawing. Now, the kind of glue that we're going to use is liquid glue. I'm using Elmer's, but probably any liquid glue would work. And when liquid glue dries, it dries clear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this black marker to put a line on my white paper. Um, the thing is, if I just drew right away with the glue, the black or the line would turn up clear and I actually want my lines to be black. So I'm going to put a black line with my Crayola marker. Any water-based marker would work well. Notice I'm using kind of the thick edge or the thick side of my marker, the flat part to get a nice wide line instead of doing a real thin line like that. All right, don't worry if the marker smears a little bit. When we get to the coloring part, you're not going to notice that at all. Okay, so then, once you've got the marker work done and your name and code is on the back, you're gonna take a glue bottle and open it. Now, check for any dry glue that might be in the way. And remember, you have to twist it to open it. The little white dot at the top is actually part of the glue bottle. So grab a hold of the orange part and turn it until that goes down on the inside. All right, to do the glue drawing, you gotta have enough glue, let it drip down to the tip, and start at the top of your paper. And what you're gonna do is carefully go over your black lines. I will fast forward through this part. Okay, so now that I have this done, it needs to go somewhere safe to dry. You wanna keep it somewhere flat. Um, if you have a drying rack, that would be great as long as it doesn't have too much of a tilt. When it dries, the glue will dry clear and you'll still be able to see the black lines. And the neat thing is the texture 
or, or the texture of the glue, remember texture is how something feels when you touch it, you actually can feel the texture of the dry glue on here, which is kind of really neat. Um, so if you don't um, have marker underneath, the glue won't quite show up the same. You can see I cut a little off my line there and it shows kind of blue. All right, now if you're wanting to do a nighttime creature, you will need a piece of black paper. And I start off the same way, write my name. I'm going to turn it over. Make sure you have your coat on there too. And remember, draw nice big shapes. And it might be kind of tricky to see this on the black paper, but just remember the rule. Nice big shapes. I'm gonna put eyebrows on this one and maybe some nice tall horns. A nice mouth. Maybe my tooth will be on top this time. Okay, now with this, with the black, you're simply going to start at the top again and you're going to just go on. No need to do the black marker part because your paper is already black. And so when the glue dries, you will be able to see the black line once it's all dry. All right, I'm gonna fast forward through this part too. All right, so now I've got the glue on this one done as well. And when that comes off the drawing rack, it's going to look a little bit different because your paper's black and the lines are black. You can see it's a little bit lighter where the glue has dried, but you can really feel that texture of the gl dry glue, which is really great. Now, once you've finished um, and the glue has dried, you're ready for part two of this lesson, which is the coloring part. Okay, so construction paper crayons, you could use regular crayons too, um, and it won't really matter if you're using the white paper um, with regular crayons. However, regular crayons might have a little more trouble showing up on the black paper. Construction paper crayons do show up really nicely on the black paper. So I've separated mine into warm colors, which are your reds, your oranges, and your yellows. I also added brown. Um, Oops, somebody stuck the brown one there. Uh, we've also got cool colors, which are your blues, your purples, and your greens. Plus I added gray just for fun. Um, and I have white. White doesn't really fit in either group, so I just kept it out by itself. Now, if you're coloring with on the white paper, what you wanna do is find some textures. Now I have texture rubbing plates um, that I can slip easily under my paper. If you're doing this at home, you might have to go on a texture hunt and find some places where you can put your paper on top of bumpy things um, to get some texture. Now I think I'm gonna use cool colors on my creature here. And since this crayon does not have paper on it, I can use the side of my crayon and color in and around. Now the nice thing about having the glue lines is that I, it will keep my crayon kind of off of those places. You just can kind of feel when you're getting close to those. Try not to color on top of the glue lines. And if you're feeling like you need to get a little bit closer but the side of your crayon's not letting you do that, then use the tip. Although you may have to blend in where your crayon goes right next because you notice when you use the tip of your crayon, it gets darker. And so I'm just gonna kinda let that fade out. I'm gonna go dark right next to my glue lines and then let that fade out. I'm gonna do that all over this purple area. Dark next to the line, then fade out. Now, if you're feeling up to it and you feel like maybe you want to use more than one of one of these colors on your creature, you can. You can mix and match colors. Uh, maybe I'll do a little blue mixed in. Of course, I'm going to stick with blue because it's another cool color, just like purple. Um, 
And when I do the sky area or the negative space up here where there's nothing, I think I will switch over to warm colors. So I think I'll switch textures when I do that. Let's see what I have here. This looks kind of like an interesting texture. Remember, place the texture under your paper. Start off by rubbing with the side of your crayon, which is basically you just lay it on your paper and push it back and forth. Hold your paper nice and still. Get as close to those black lines as you can. I decided to mix a little bit of yellow with that uh, dark pink. I think also one thing I should do is just like I did on the purple area down here, is to take my color and color right next to the line. And if you get a little bit of glue or color on your glue, you can just kind of scrub that off of there with your fingernail or just your finger. Coloring right next to that glue line really brings out the color. It almost makes it look like the monster or the creature here is glowing. And then I usually go back and just kind of let that fade into the other colors. And you can do that if you're using more than one color, you can do that with both colors or just one. You have to decide what looks good to you. Remember, try not to get scribbly. One last thing I have to do on that one, and that is definitely color the horns here. So let me get a new texture and a new color. How about some gray? Now this is a pretty small area and if I try to put my crayon in sideways, I think I'm gonna go out of my lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use the tip for the whole thing. I usually like to outline first. It's really kind of tricky to outline because it's bumpy. And then I just kind of go back and fill in. Don't leave any gaps when you're coloring. Try to fill that whole shape in. And I'll do the same thing on this other side. Outline first, color it in. Now you can decide if you want to color the eyes in or you can just leave those blank and that, if you do to leave them blank, that means it's done. You have to decide on their teeth too. Now if you're doing the black, it is a bit trickier to get your colors to look correct on the black. So maybe this time instead of using cool colors like I did on my creature here, I will use uh, warm colors down here. And I haven't used this orange yet, so I feel like I'll start that there. So I'm gonna outline. I think maybe I should do the outline first. Sometimes I like to do the outlining first, and then other times I like to color the whole thing in. So this time, let's try outlining first. And that means outlining around the mouth and the teeth. And if you get a little on the glue, just kind of wipe that off or rub that off. Unless I didn't quite get close there. I'm gonna go back and get it as close as I can without going on the glue. And now I can take my crayon and I can rub over the whole area here. This is a nice yellow orange color. You can see the construction paper crayons work really nicely. Some regular crayons will also work on black paper. You just have to test out and see which ones work best for you. If you have oil pastels, you could do this with oil pastels as well. Although they can be a bit messier than crayons. Texture rubbing doesn't usually work well with markers. You could also use chalk if you have that available. All right, you have to decide if you feel like it needs mixing or not. I'm gonna leave it this way for just now and I'll think about the mixing later. Sometimes if you turn over these texture rubbing plates to a different side, you can get a whole different look. So maybe I will use some of this, well, let's try this green color. I haven't used this yet. So I'll try just coloring first and see how that works. So right now I'm using what we call implied texture because even though this is actual texture on the paper, under the paper, the paper is pretty much staying the same. Okay, I can see a problem right now. 
When I just colored with only the side, especially on this black paper, it's really hard to catch where my lines are. So I really have to go back and fill in right next to my line. It's not filling in quite as easily as it did on the white paper. So I have to work a little bit more, but I think in the end, it'll be worth it going around both sides of this antenna. And if you feel like you need to use the tip of your crayon for the whole thing to get your black lines to show up, then that's what you need to do. But don't scribble. Okay, I think what I really need to do now are the eyes and the teeth, and I think I want to use white. It is okay if you want to use the smooth, hard texture of the table instead of having a bumpy texture underneath on the teeth or the eyes. If you feel like that would be better, then go ahead and just use the smooth, hard texture. And do the teeth first. That looks better. And I'm gonna do my eyes next. Of course, if you feel like having yellow eyes or green eyes there, you could. If you don't wanna have white, choose a different color. The harder you push with your crayon, the brighter the colors will show up on the dark paper. That's starting to look really nice. All right, I think I do want to do a little bit of mixing on this, but I haven't used pink, this lighter pink yet, so that's what I think I'll do. And I think I'll add maybe just a different texture underneath there, just to kind of give it a little pizzazz. Mixed textures as well. Oh, I'm starting to really like this now. I think I've got to color these in too, so let's try this brown color. And I think I'll go with a smooth texture there. Okay, so now you can see both ways the day creature and the night creature. We've used real texture because the glue has dried and left a real texture on our paper. Plus, by using some real textures underneath our paper, we were able to create implied texture, which just means it looks like it has texture, but you don't necessarily really feel a lot of texture on your paper. This was a lot of fun. I hope you've had fun with it and enjoyed making your silly texture creatures with me today. And until next time, I hope you have an artastic day. Bye.